Thank you very much. Um, firstly, like everyone else, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me here to speak uh, and for bringing us all to Uppsala. Um, so I will be talking about two-dimensional minimal model CFDs and uh, holographic higher spin uh, duals. Uh, so I, I'll start with a couple of questions by way of motivation uh, and give you the basic statement of this duality between the minimal model CFTs and higher spin theories. Uh, and um, uh, uh, oops, uh, I'll come back to this uh, later at the end of the talk uh, and try to see how far we've, we can address these questions that I raised at the beginning in the context of this duality. Uh, so this within the boundaries of these two, uh, 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 these two parts of the talk, the bulk of the talk will be uh, about detailed checks of this proposal. Uh, some of it will be a little technical, uh, but, uh, but I hope if you've had a long day or if you're counting down to the banquet, you can sort of reconstruct the bulk from the boundary. Uh, so, uh, so I'll uh, uh, let you uh, give you that choice. So, um, so let me start with the questions. Uh, um, okay, uh, this is based on work with, uh, on basically on two papers, one with Matthias Gabardiel in which we proposed the duality uh, and uh, a more recent one with uh, Matthias as well as Tom Hartman who is here and Subrat Raju. Uh, at my institute, in which we did some of the checks on the partition functions. Um, so, uh, so here are a pair of questions, and um, uh, depending on your taste, hopefully one or the other of them will resonate with you, uh, and, um, uh, and we'll see. I, I won't be able to answer these questions in, full, uh, in, in the generality of in which I raised them, but, uh, uh, but hopefully you'll see that uh, the, the particular model has uh, some of the features which might allow you to address these questions. So, uh, so the, uh, the space of two-dimensional quantum field theories uh, and generically non-supersymmetric quantum field theories is a very rich one, and for a long time they were the sort of workhorse of quantum field theories in trying to understand uh, non-trivial dynamical phenomena. Uh, and um, and one went a long way with them, and you you could you could see a variety of uh, uh, rich phenomena that uh, you expected to see in uh, four-dimensional quantum field theories, uh, fairly exactly and explicitly in the two-dimensional context. And perhaps until the advent of uh, solutions or supersymmetric theories, these were sort of our prime source of intuition uh, uh, for uh, quantum field theories. And uh, of course, there's a long list of such models, the sigma models, principal chiral models, the gross Neville model, and in some ways, perhaps the most non-trivial of them, the Tuft model of two-dimensional QCD. Uh, um, so, um, and, and then, of course, there are the famous two-dimensional conformal field theories, which in some sense are the fixed points governing the flows within the space. Uh, so, um, so you have this very large class of uh, uh, two-dimensional quantum field theories, which are uh, uh, fairly well understood. Uh, but we can ask whether these theories and their non-trivial features especially uh, can be viewed in a holographic way. Can, can we understand these phenomena in a holographic way? In other words, uh, our conventional ADS-CFT understanding, can it be extended to these examples? Uh, and uh, this is not purely an academic question, I think, because we have very few examples of non-supersymmetric cases of ADS-CFT, and, um, and if we are to hope to address uh, eventually field theories in four dimensions, three or four dimensions, uh, 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 non-trivial field theories, which are non-supersymmetric, if we hope to develop a holographic dual to them, it's probably useful to start with the examples we already understand. So uh, that's one uh, set of questions. Uh, but here is something from a gravity point of view, uh, a completely dif different looking question. Uh, so, if, um, so you might ask, are there complete quantum mechanically consistent theories uh, of quantum gravity in, uh, in anti de Sitter space at least, which do not have a stringy set of additional excitations? So, uh, I mean, we are used to the belief that uh, string theory pr is probably the only uh, quantum theory of gravity, which uh, is complete and consistent. Uh, but if you feel that there are uh, maybe examples worth exploring, which, uh, uh, which might be, uh, if you think there's a chance that this, there might be theories which are, which are sort of uh, not quite 
stringy, uh, but are still uh, quantum mechanically consistent, then three dimensions is a good place to look because uh, gravity is non-propagating and there are black holes uh, in the theory, so it's, it, it does exhibit many of the features of uh, 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 sort of a non-trivial theory of uh, gravity. Uh, uh, but the prospects for pure three-dimensional gravity to be consistent and quantum mechanically consistent don't appear to be very bright. Um, there, was some, there was some intense investigation a few years ago, and while not uh, totally conclusive, seemed to suggest that uh, perhaps uh, a, a quantum description uh, of uh, at least semi-classical gravity uh, uh, with a semi-classical limit doesn't seem to exist. Uh, uh, for pure gravity, but uh, you can ask whether something intermediate between gravity and string theory uh, uh, could be quantum mechanically well defined, and higher spin gravity theories are something like that in that they have one stringy tower of excitations. And um, in fact, if you, uh, if you were to address this question and perhaps find an affirmative answer, uh, you could, uh, you could uh, further refine the question into <coughs> One of whether the dual conformal field theory provides this quantum definition uh, uh, on, or whether there's an autonomous definition of this higher spin theory, a quantum mechanical definition of these higher spin theories which uh, uh, make the theory well defined. So as I said, I won't be able to address all these, I won't be able to answer these questions, but uh, hopefully some progress towards addressing them. So, um, so, uh, so the proposal uh, to try to address them uh, is in the context of a large N family of two-dimensional conformal field theories, the so-called WN minimal model series, and uh, we consider them in a Toft-like limit. Um, and the proposal is that these are dual to uh, uh, Vassiliev type higher spin theories on ADS3, coupled with, uh, so there's a whole higher spin tower of spin starting from two, but uh, in addition coupled to two complex scalars. So, um, uh, so there is, uh, I would also refer you to a paper by Shi Yin and his student, uh, in which they, uh, they proposed a sort of a truncation of this proposal to address some uh, puzzles that are there, which I will also come to later. Uh, um, yeah, but this, uh, this truncation is sort of a modular uh, non-invariant truncation in which uh, the dual has only one complex scalar. Uh, so uh, so le let me stick to the... Uh, the original proposal. So the original proposal is uh, uh, that um, uh, if you consider the following Cosette Vesumino Witten theories, uh, which are non supersymmetric uh, uh, two dimensional conformal field theories, uh, if you consider the series of SUN level k times SUN level 1, modeled out by SUN level k plus 1, this is a series uh, which generalizes the, the famous Verasoro unitary series. Uh, the n equal to 2 version is the, is the usual series which has the Ising model at criticality and so on. Uh, uh, so if you consider this family of conformal field theories. This is a discrete family for every n and k, uh, for n and k, but if you consider a large n limit in which you take n and k very large, uh, keeping this combination uh, lambda, which is n over n plus k finite, uh, then uh, you effectively get a line of fixed points labeled by this lambda for any given n, and the central charge for these theories, uh, it's easy to see, uh, goes like n into 1 minus lambda square. Uh, and the fact that it's proportional to n rather than n square uh, is indicative of a vector-like model. Uh, and I'll say a bit about that. Uh, 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 so, uh, and the bulk dual uh, to this, the, uh, the proposal is uh, uh, to consider fields of spin 2 all the way to infinity. This is the Vassiliev higher spin tower uh, in ADS3, but coupled uh, in addition, uh, uh, and this is very important, uh, the two complex scalars uh, with equal masses, and the masses I, I will parameterize in this way uh, with. Uh, to relate to the lambda and the uh, field theory. Uh, and, uh, uh, mass, uh, and since lambda is sort of a parameter between 0 and 1, uh, uh, this, uh, these masses lie within the window where you can quantize them in two, one of two opposite ways. And, uh, uh, and depending on which, which way you quantize, they correspond to primaries in the uh, uh, CFT with, uh, with dimensions h plus or minus, uh, uh, which is half into 1 plus or minus lambda, the sum uh, having to add up to 1. Uh, 
So, uh, so that's the sort of basic statement of the duality. So let's try to sort of uh, understand uh, this better in stages. So, uh, uh, the, so the first thing you might ask is why might something like this be true? Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and at least in a certain limit, which is uh, in taking k very large, or rather taking k larger, uh, k faster to infinity than n, uh, which, uh, in which you are effectively at the lambda equal to zero point in the, uh, in, uh, in the parameterization I uh, uh, gave you earlier. Uh, then these theories are essentially those of n minus one free fermions with a singlet condition. And, uh, and free theories uh, of fermions and bosons uh, are, um, have a very large uh, global symmetry uh, uh, in this two-dimensional context, a sort of a WN type symmetry, uh, uh, rather, yeah, uh, W infinity type symmetry. And uh, so any dual for this, sh uh, these theories should, uh, uh, should have a very large gauge invariance in the bulk uh, uh, corresponding to this large gauge uh, global symmetry. Uh, and uh, this is very much the analog of the uh, proposal in, uh, in uh, for a uh, four-dimensional higher spin dual to three-dimensional vector models of fermions or bosons, uh, uh, in which, um, uh, uh, and of course, you can flow to an interacting fixed point as well, but, uh, um, uh, but this is uh, very similar to uh, the way in which the higher spin uh, global symmetries in the three-dimensional case are mapped to higher spin uh, gauge symmetries in ADS4. So this is the 2D, 3D version of this uh, uh, proposal. Uh, uh, so, uh, and so indeed, uh, in fact, in ADS3, uh, uh, it was realized fairly recently that, uh, uh, that these Vasiliev type theories, in fact, you can uh, uh, truncate these theories to a maximal spin n, these Vasiliev type theories, when truncated, have an asymptotic Wn uh, symmetry algebra. Uh, and um, uh, this is a generalization of the classical Brown Heno result uh, uh, for uh, pure three dimensional gravity, where you have a Virasoro asymptotic symmetry algebra. So the n equal to two case is the uh, Virasoro case. Uh, uh, but this generalizes. Um, However, taking the large n limit of this uh, is a little subtle. Uh, in fact, um, uh, as was studied recently by Gabardiel and Hartmann, uh, um, the asymptotic symmetry algebra of these higher spin theories, if you, when you take n to infinity, is actually labeled by one parameter. Uh, uh, um, and there's a family of asymptotic symmetries, uh, uh, the so-called W infinity lambda uh, uh, symmetry, which was constructed earlier by these gentlemen, uh, uh, and, uh, and also perhaps others. Uh, uh, this is the asymptotic algebra, where, and sitting inside it, just like SL2C sits inside two copies of the Verasoro algebra, uh, there is the exact symmetry algebra of the, uh, of the higher spin theory that's uh, uh, the so-called HS lambda algebra. So, uh, so the uh, the subtlety is, lies in the fact that this symmetry of the bulk theory is at first sight uh, uh, different. I mean, uh, um, uh, at zeroth order, it looks as if there are all these W infinity symmetries. But if you look at them carefully, uh, this symmetry in the bulk is very naturally uh, this one parameter family W infinity of lambda, and uh, this is actually not quite the same as the uh, uh, symmetry of the large n limit of the boundary theories uh, that we described, these WN minimal models. Uh, uh, the, those have a subalgebra, just like the Virasoro has an SL2C, this has an SLN, uh, and, this, and the large n limit is not quite uh, that. Uh, however, uh, 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 there's strong evidence uh, and, uh, uh, and Gabardil and Hartman, uh, uh, and later in our paper, we uh, give evidence for, act, uh, for a non-trivial equivalence between these two uh, symmetry algebras, uh, which is a sort of a generalized level rank kind of duality. So this is, uh, uh, so the basic thing here, what I 
uh, uh, would like to get across is that uh, the symmetries are very non-trivially, uh, the, the symmetries between this, uh, between this boundary theory in the large end limit and that of the bulk, uh, are, uh, there's good evidence that they are the same, but they are same in a, not in a very obvious way, but rather through this sort of level rank duality uh, um, uh, kind of way. Uh, so, so that's about the symmetries. Um, so next, we can ask whether uh, uh, the CFT, which, um, as we will see soon, is very explicit, whether it can reproduce uh, in the leading large and limit, whether it can reproduce the bulk spectrum uh, of fluctuations, linearized fluctuations, uh, of these higher spin fields, uh, uh, together with the scalar. Uh, so, uh, so, the, so in the bulk, uh, if you are at very large n, then you can treat it semi-classically. Uh, the bulk spectrum is essentially given by the classical and the one-loop contribution. Uh, so you can put the theory on thermal ADS uh, and look at the one-loop partition function. Uh, and uh, um, so this has a piece which is, this is the classical piece, the prefactor, which is sort of uh, uh, standard and uh, straightforward. Uh, but in this particular case, the one-loop determinants in thermal ADS come from uh, the fields that we have in the theory, namely this tower of uh, higher spins, uh, uh, together with two complex scalars, one quantized with this sort of H plus and the other quantized with H minus. So, uh, so because they're complex, you get the factor of two. So you have the scalar piece and then a higher spin piece and the classical piece. So that's what the bulk uh, uh, perturbative bulk spectrum uh, would be. Um, and uh, these determinants can be evaluated. It's a little bit, uh, 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 it's a, you have to be just very careful about doing it uh, and uh, and the answer for the higher spin fields, uh, the final answer is very simple. Actually, uh, you can write the, uh, this is the this first term is the contribution from from a given spin s, and then you take the product from s equal to two to infinity, uh, and this actually can be written in terms of something that has appeared earlier in this conference, the so-called McMahon function, uh, uh, which also appears, yeah, it, uh, which appears in a number of contexts. Uh, so the higher spin contribution is just this, this McMahon function, uh, and uh, uh, the scalar contribution is even easier to evaluate. Uh, that's just given by something like this, uh, which can be viewed as a sort of exponentiation of single particle states, uh, uh, single particle contribution. Uh, this is sort of the single particle contribution of a scalar uh, uh, particle and all its descendants uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, L0 eigenvalue h, uh, uh, comma h. And, uh, but interestingly, this answer can be re-expressed in terms of a sum of characters of uh, u infinity uh, uh, and uh, with some chemical potentials. Uh, uh, these are um, I mean, these are essentially the sure functions. Uh, so in any case, there's uh, the point is that there's a very explicit expression for, uh, uh, for all the pieces that go into uh, the bulk uh, spectrum. Uh, and uh, so all these pieces here, uh, so there's a McMahon function here, and then there are these pieces which, uh, uh, which are essentially characters of U infinity. Uh, uh, so... Um, so if you put them all together, this is what you get. Uh, there's a, the prefactor with the McMahon, which is common to everything, and then there's a sum over representations, uh, uh, and these are representations uh, uh, which, which are those with a finite number of boxes in the young tableau, uh, and these are the chemical potentials. And, uh, 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 and so, and as I said earlier, you can view this as the contribution from non-interacting multiparticle states uh, 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 with, uh, with uh, of these complex scalars, uh, the piece uh, with uh, the complex scalar with uh, corresponding to the primary with dimension H plus uh, uh, is this the the sum over representations R plus and S plus, and then there there's a piece uh, with the scalars of dimension. H minus, and that's this. So, and then the mod square of the whole thing. So, uh, so, and these the boundary generalized boundary gravitons, uh, the brown heno generalized brown heno like gravitons are all in this McMahon function. So, uh, so that's the bulk answer. It's a little uh, not uh, not completely simple, but uh, it's an explicit uh, answer. Uh, 
And uh, you can ask whether the conformal field theory can reproduce this minimal model conformal field theories in this large n limit uh, can reproduce this uh, 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 this answer. And uh, you're in luck because these are uh, uh, solvable conformal field theories uh, uh, from the fact that they are cosets of the wesemino witten theory. Uh, and uh, uh, you know the complete uh, uh, spectrum of primaries. They are labeled for any finite n and k. In fact, uh, you know the spectrum. They are labeled by two weights, lambda plus and lambda minus. Uh, of uh, SUN level K and SUN level K plus one, respectively. These were the factors that appeared in the numerator and the denominator of the coset, uh, respectively. So you can label them uh, by two weights. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the dimension uh, corresponding to such a primary is given by an explicit expression involving these weights, uh, or rather the norm of these weights shifted appropriately. Uh, uh, this generalizes, by the way, the famous uh, Feigen-Fuchs uh, uh, BPZ formula for uh, the SU2 case, which gives you all the primaries of the minimal models, the Versoro minimal models. Uh, there, there's just two numbers because it's SU2 representation, so there are just two numbers, R and S. Here, there's a whole weight. Uh, to give you some examples um, uh, of what these dimensions look like, uh, the simplest case is, of course, if you take the trivial representation for lambda plus and lambda minus, that's just zero. That's the vacuum uh, character. Uh, that's the vacuum uh, primary. Uh, uh, but the, uh, but there are, of course, many non-trivial primaries. And uh, if you take, say, lambda plus to be zero and and this to be the fundamental, uh, lambda minus to be the fundamental. For any finite n and k, that's the answer. But uh, nicely enough, uh, very obligingly, the CFT in the large n and k limit gives you something uh, which is familiar, uh, which is sort of recognizable. It's just half into 1 minus lambda we had as h minus. Uh, and if you take the other way around, the fundamental with the 0, that gives you, uh, again, it's some uh, not, not very nice looking expression for finite n and k, but at large n and k, it just gives you h plus. So notice that the sum adds up to 1 only in this Toft limit. For any finite n and k, it doesn't. Uh, uh, but that's part of the simplification of the large n limit. Uh, uh, another example, uh, if you consider the adjoint instead, uh, uh, the, and the zero adjoint gives you, again, something which, uh, once again, in the Toft limit, becomes 1 minus lambda. The other one becomes 1 plus lambda. And you notice that this becomes, this is just twice h minus, and this is just twice h plus. This is something that had to happen if, you, if these were to be interpretable as multiparticle states. So that's already an encouraging sign that these multiparticle, that uh, these uh, primaries uh, uh, can potentially rearrange themselves into multiparticle states of a, uh, uh, of a single field, perhaps uh, a couple of fields in the bulk. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so these were just the spectrum of the primaries. The full partition function to get it, uh, to uh, to get the full partition function, you have to uh, to uh, to to get the contribution from the whole tower above these primaries uh, of all the Verisoro descendants. But as you know, uh, uh, in these minimal models, there are lots of null states, uh, so you have to subtract out uh, uh, subtract them out appropriately. And there's an expression analogous to the one of the Verisoro minimal models that is. Uh, uh, known uh, explicitly in terms of this is the Dedekind and Dieter function, uh, and then uh, uh, sum over the affine Weil group. So it looks uh, uh, a little complicated, but but it's it's explicit enough. Uh, and uh, we will look at the. So this was just the holomorphic piece. You put the uh, left and right moving pieces together, uh, and uh, uh, and there are many ways to do this in a modular invariant way. Uh, and it's interesting to ask what they all correspond to. But we will look at the simplest diagonal modular invariant partition function, in which you just take the sum of mod squares uh, of each of these. Uh, uh, each of these uh, uh, primaries. So, so this is the object that we will be considering uh, and trying to take the large nth of limit of uh, uh, to see and to and to uh, hopefully match with the bulk answer that uh, that I showed you a little while ago. Uh, so, uh, so the large nth of limit is a little 
tricky, and, uh, and uh, uh, I'm not sure we have uh, come to grips yet with all the subtleties involved in it, uh, but, uh, 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 but let me tell you what we understand right now. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, to match with the bulk spectrum, uh, we'll consider representations which uh, these lambda pluses and lambda minuses, we'll consider the primaries corresponding to lambda plus and lambda minus, uh, in which, which are finite tensor powers of the fundamentals or anti-fundamentals as we take n to infinity. So in other words, we will label lambda plus and lambda minus by two representations R and S, or R bar S, uh, uh, where, uh, uh, where S uh, has a finite number of boxes in the Young tableau, and R, which is the complement of R bar, so this is n, uh, uh, columns. Uh, so this is, if you wish, the number of anti-fundamentals. That's also finite. Uh, so we'll take R and S to be finite. We'll consider representations in which uh, the R and S don't scale with N. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, let me tell you a bit, a bit why. Uh, uh, these representations in which R and the number of boxes uh, in R and S are of, of order one, these certainly have finite dimension in the Toft limit. So that's uh, you can uh, put that into the expression I, gave, I showed you earlier, uh, and you see that these representations have finite dimensions. Uh, and uh, if you consider representations in which uh, uh, the uh, in which there are uh, which are not finite tensor powers of fundamental and anti-fundamental, typically they scale as some positive power of n. This may be interesting to study black holes and so on, but uh, we will not look at them since we are looking only at the perturbative states. So, uh, so, but there are these primaries as well. But in the strict, uh, in the naive large n limit, they decouple. Uh, but, uh, 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 but this is just for a typical primary. Uh, you can have situations where lambda plus and lambda minus uh, may both have order n number of boxes and n anti boxes, uh, uh, but their difference is of order one, in which case the dimension happens to be finite. Uh, 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 and th there are lots of such states too, though. The, uh, 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 but, uh, but most of them, uh, even at large but finite n, because of the fusion rules of the CFT, uh, if you consider perturbative states which uh, have only a finite number of boxes, at, say in a two or three point function, that would not produce uh, uh, these which have order n number of boxes. So, uh, and so. Uh, so at least uh, from, and from that point of view, these states appear to be decoupled. Um, but there's a further subtlety, which is that uh, even amongst the primaries which have uh, order n, uh, order one number of boxes, these ones uh, with uh, a number of box, these ones of the kind that I showed you in the previous slide with finite number of boxes in R and S, uh, there are uh, when. Uh, 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 even for uh, some of them, there's a, even uh, amongst these primaries, there's a very large degeneracy. For instance, the simplest case is if you were to take lambda plus equal to lambda minus, uh, uh, their dimensions actually go like 1 over n. And so it would seem that in the large n limit, these are all degenerate with the vacuum. Uh, and so one has to look a little carefully at the structure of the representations in the in the Stoff limit to see, to get a I get some idea of what is going on uh, and whether this is uh, uh, whether this is reasonable. Uh, so, uh, as I said, these branching functions are known explicitly. These uh, uh, for uh, for each of these primaries, and in the Toft limit, they simplify considerably. Uh, you can express them in terms of uh, various group theoretic quantities. Never mind what these are. These are the S matrices of the current algebra. These are the fusion coefficients and so on. Uh, but the main point I would like you to see is in the second line that these branching functions actually become sums of uh, uh, other branching functions, simpler branching functions, if you wish, uh, in which one of the uh, uh, representation labels is uh, the trivial one. Uh, and uh, uh, you can, uh, and this is a signature that the representation is becoming irreducible. So this happens only in the strict Toft limit, uh, uh, and not for any finite n and k. But in this limit, uh, the character, if you wish, uh, is uh, is breaking up into sums of characters. So it's a signature, the representation becoming reducible, and. Uh, 
This right-hand side, by the way, can be simplified. Uh, and you can you see the McMahon function appearing and various characters of the you can express it in terms of the quantum dimension, and these characters of uh, uh, U infinity naturally appear. Uh, so it does appear as if one is on the right track, but one needs to understand what this reducibility is uh, like. And uh, uh, so the simplest case where something like this happens uh, is where you take both lambda plus and lambda minus to be in the fundamental representation. And uh, uh, the branching function is then the sum, uh, like I said, it, it's reducible, it's a sum of two characters, uh, in this case just two. Uh, one is the vacuum character, since this begins with q to the zero, and the other corresponds to an adjoint. Uh, uh, so, uh, so it's a sum of two characters. Uh, uh, but if you look at, uh, so naively you might think it's just the sum of these two representations, uh, but if you look at the operator algebra, uh, 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 the natural way in which uh, the structure of these uh, representations uh, uh, appears is that, uh, is that this representation is some kind of a descendant uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the non-trivial representation which you would really like. Uh, uh, to have, uh, because this is, you already have the vacuum representation, so this seems like you're uh, getting it back all over again. Uh, uh, so uh, indeed, the vacuum representation in this uh, case is uh, some kind of a generalized descendant, uh, and uh, the psi is not equal to L minus one of omega, so, uh, so it's what is called an indecomposable kind of a representation where, uh, uh, where uh, which is sort of not block diagonal. Uh, so, uh, so just like for null states, these additional states uh, and their descendants appear to decouple from all physical correlation functions, and indeed, it's only this which sort of generates the whole representation, only this, uh, 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 the tower above this uh, uh, survives. So, in other words, if this was, if this was a little bit uh, long and technical, uh, the, uh, the basic point I want to make is that there's a certain pattern to this reducibility, uh, and uh, the only representations which, uh, uh, which survive are ones in, in, this, uh, in, this redu in the sum over representations. Basically, most of the uh, sub-representations are, uh, are, uh, uh, correspond to null states, and what survive are the class of representations in which boxes and anti-boxes do not annihilate. And uh, uh, so you need to correct the CFT partition function to correctly take into account the presence of these additional null states which are present in the large nth of limit. And, uh, and if you do that and correct for that by just restricting yourself to these representations, then indeed the, the corrected character, the branching function, uh, is just... Uh, uh, is just uh, uh, has this McMahon function and various characters of, uh, uh, of U infinity, in fact, labeled by two representations, R plus S plus R minus S minus. Uh, and, uh, and this corrected partition function in this limit uh, is just the uh, sum over these representations, uh, mod square. Uh, and if you compare with the perturbative gravity answer that I uh, gave you earlier, uh, it's exactly the same. Uh, uh, the uh, the, the, for all values of the Thoff coupling, the two uh, appear to match. The Thoff coupling is, enters into, the fa into all these H pluses and H minuses, which are functions of, uh, so these chemical potentials that I, if you recall, have uh, factors of H plus and H minus, uh, uh, that I plus is H plus, that I minus is H minus. And uh, so for all values of the Thoff coupling, uh, these two agree. Uh, but one point to note is that uh, when I, uh, 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 the, con uh, the conformal field theory partition function actually has these representations appearing with a sort of a transpose, uh, and uh, 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 whereas in the original one uh, uh, it was just uh, R and S. Of course, when you're summing over all representations, that doesn't matter, but this is a reflection of this level rank duality that I mentioned, uh, which uh, between the symmetry uh, uh, of uh, the generalized level rank duality between this bulk asymptotic symmetry and the, uh, uh, that of the Thoff large and limit. Uh, so, um, so that's about the spectrum. Recently, there was a paper by Xi Yin and his 
student Chang on uh, comparing three-point functions so of uh, scalar primaries and one of these currents uh, with a bulk, uh, so it's uh, 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 with a corresponding bulk computation of two scalars and one spin S gauge field. Uh, they performed it for, uh, they could perform it the bulk computation for uh, uh, any spin, but a particular value of lambda. Uh, and the boundary computation they could do for particular spins. And in each case, they found agreement. Uh, but it seems possible that you can push this and do things for any value of the coupling, uh, uh, though perhaps it's technically more challenging. So, uh, so, these, uh, so that the three-point functions appear to, uh, uh, to also uh, to agree. So, uh, to, uh, so these were some checks of this duality. Uh, and uh, so we can now come back and try to uh, uh, see where we stand. Uh, uh, so uh, I think it's important to understand better these role of these additional additional primaries, which uh, at least in the infinite n limit they seem to decouple, but they are there at every uh, at large but finite n. Uh, uh, so is there some sense in which they are an almost decoupled sector? Uh, do they contribute at the same order? in intermediate states of correlation functions, uh, 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 say a four-point function, uh, this is yet to be checked. Uh, uh, what if, uh, depending on uh, what is the bulk interpretation then of these sort of uh, additional states, or does the proposal need some kind of truncation uh, and so that you don't describe the full WN theory but some subsector of it? Uh, in any case, I think more tests are needed uh, uh, to distinguish this. Uh, there are certain, there are generalizations uh, which have been studied to the, uh, the, uh, the D the D series, the orthogonal series, uh, and uh, things happen, seem to work in very similar way. Uh, uh, there's a, dual, a duality to the Vasiliev theories with even number of spins and so on. Uh, 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 for a general coset or conformal, uh, or general rational conformal field theory, it seems as if uh, it seems to have features which would allow you a bulk dual, but though there's been no concrete proposal, uh, so perhaps uh, uh, studying these more general cosets and supersymmetric examples would, uh, would help you map out uh, uh, this uh, space of these dualities. Uh, and uh, to come back to the original theme of two-dimensional quantum field theories, uh, um, uh, these CFTs can be perturbed by various operators, and you can, uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can go to various interesting non-conformal quantum field theories, some of them integrable, some of them uh, uh, many, I think, a large number of interesting quantum field theories. Uh, so, uh, 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 so it would be interesting to see how uh, this duality works uh, in these non-conformal cases. Uh, and uh, uh, potentially some of these uh, CFTs, these, uh, these are uh, the, this, the ZN, uh, these ZN, uh, these WN generalizations uh, include among them uh, the ZN Ising model of equivalently parafermionic uh, theories, uh, which sometimes crop up in various contexts, so I don't know, but uh, these are non-supersymmetric two-dimensional CFTs which could appear in, uh, in uh, real systems. Uh, that was sort of from the CFT point of view. Uh, from the bulk point of view, again, I think there are interesting questions. Uh, uh, there certainly are likely to be new classical solutions in the bulk theory because this is uh, this has uh, this is a, a, the classical Vasiliev like Lagrangian is a, uh, is a, a vast uh, non-trivial generalization of the uh, Einstein action. In fact, uh, Good Perle and Krauss and their collaborators have already constructed some exotic black holes. There are very interesting issues to do with the enhanced gauge symmetry, which is a bit like the enhanced symmetry uh, gauge symmetry of string theory, which contains diffeomorphism, but is more than that. Uh, um, so, uh, so I think there are interesting conceptual issues to understand there. Uh, the solutions with scalar hair have not been constructed, which are the kind of theories that, uh, which are the, which are relevant to the theories that we. Uh, we are studying here, uh, and perhaps these Vasiliev-like theories can desingularize uh, certain uh, naively singular geometries, like at least conical defects, I believe. Uh, but um, uh, uh, so uh, again, to return to the theme of the beginning uh, about what this can teach us about 3D gravity. Uh, um, uh, so 
uh, if the WN CFT does is completely uh, the WN minimal model series is a unitary uh, model invariant C, uh, theory for any n and k. Uh, uh, so if that defines a quantum theory of uh, gravity in the bulk, it's uh, it, it, uh, and uh, which is the Vesselier like theory or, or a modification thereof, uh, then uh, one would appear to have a theory which is not a string theory, uh, which is quantum mechanically consistent. One could address issues potentially about microstates uh, uh, in these theories for non-supersymmetric black holes. Uh, and there's been always this tension between integrable quantum field theories having an infinite number of conserved charges and presence of black holes. I think it would be interesting to see that, uh, how, it's, how that tension is resolved here. Uh, uh, there generalizations involving topologically massive theories and so on. Uh, uh, and I think something within reach, which is also probably very interesting, uh, is to prove this duality. There is a Chan Simons-like formulation, which I didn't really uh, de describe, uh, of the uh, Vasiliev higher spin theory. And Chan Simons theories have a very close relation to uh, uh, to these uh, to Bessemino Witten theories uh, and even Cosette models. Uh, uh, so, uh, but again, there are many uh, many subtleties. I think in in this connection, uh, uh, but, uh, but it's probably within reach to try to prove this duality in sort of first principle, which would give you uh, sort of a, maybe a nuts and bolts understanding of a holography, and I would like to believe that these are sort of the minimal holographic models, if you wish. Uh, uh, and uh, in this John Simon's description, uh, one of the subtleties is the uh, incorporation of these scalars, which seems to sort of uh, uh, break the naive uh, formulation in terms of John Simon's theories that exist uh, uh, for any finite n. Uh, but on the other hand, some of the expressions I showed you uh, earlier involving these U infinity characters are very much like those of Wilson loops of the unknots in John Simon's theory. So there is perhaps a way to incorporate scale in a natural way into this John Simons like description. And finally, perhaps an embedding in string theory might be useful uh, as perhaps as a, maybe some subsector of the D1, D5 system. Uh, uh, there are relations to topological strings. In fact, I should mention a paper by Horava uh, a few years ago in which he had a similar ADS two times S1 theory with uh, higher spins, uh, which he proposed as a sort of a non-critical M theory, uh, and which had also uh, a higher spin, uh, which had a, a relation to topological string. So, uh, so there are these various issues. I'd like to thank you there. <laughs> Questions? I always thought the holographic dual of rational conformal field theory was Chern Simon's Witten theory. Could you help me understand? Yeah, so I mean, that's, uh, that's the spirit, that's what I mentioned over here. So there is a formulation of the Vesselyev type theory in terms of a Chern Simon's uh, like description, but um, this Chern Simon's description of no, the Vesselyev. No, no, I mean, I mean the old one from 1988. Yeah, so I, but I think that's related to this in the sense that uh, the cosets here are SUN cosets, but they, they seem to be related to an SLN John Simons theory. And so I believe it's the old connection, but you have to probably understand uh, some of the subtleties better uh, to do with the boundary conditions of asymptotically ADS spaces to see what, uh, what the, uh, to understand what the duality is. But I think it is. Morally, that's the connection between the two, uh, the two theories. So uh, to spell that out, I think, explicitly is what is needed. Uh. Uh, other questions? In that case, uh, let's thank Rajesh.